This video is the solution to an example problem using conservation of energy that uses spring potential energy in its solution. A little bit of background. We need to, we've identified three energies that we're looking at. We have the kinetic energy, and then we have potential energy stored in gravity and the potential energy stored in a spring. So what we need to do is with all this is ask ourselves a couple questions to figure out what the energy is doing and what kind of energy we have at that location. So when using conservation of energy, we compare two locations for mechanical energy. The first thing we ask is, is it moving at this location? If you can answer yes, that means you have kinetic energy at that location. Then you ask yourself, is it above the lowest height at this location? In other words, you're comparing two locations, and whichever one is the lowest doesn't have potential energy stored in gravity. Whichever one is the highest has a potential energy stored in the gravitational field. Then you ask yourself, is the spring compressed at this location? If there's a spring and it's compressed at that part of the motion, then the energy is stored in the spring. If it's not, then the energy isn't stored in the spring. So if you answer yes, you have the potential energy of the spring at that location. Let's look at the example problem. While the coyote is still trying to catch that roadrunner, as part of this new Acme trap, he throws a ball down on a spring as shown to the right. So he throws it down at 10 meters per second. The ball is 200 kilograms. The ball drops 20 meters until it impacts the spring. And once it hits the spring, the spring stretches downwards an additional 6 meters until it reaches its maximum compression distance. And remember, maximum compression distance is unique. And that's where the direction of the ball changes. In other words, that's where the velocity equals 0 at maximum compression. So if the velocity equals 0, so does the kinetic energy. So in solving this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to pick two locations to compare. So I want locations where I have velocity, height, and something about the spring. So one of the locations is decided by the question. Um, it's looking for the spring constant. In this case, that's going to imply to me that I've got to do the maximum compression distance because I have the least number of variables there. The second location is where you know all the energy's forms values. In other words, velocity, height, and spring compression. At the top, you know the speed and any needed heights. So up there where it's 10 meters per second. Now if I'm going to find the maximum compression, I'm going to find it somewhere on the spring. And I know in this problem, because of what's given, it's going to be at the very bottom at maximum compression. Because that's where the velocity is zero, it's the lowest point, it's the height zero, so all the energy is stored in the spring. And that's what I'm after. So that's perfect. That's what I'm going to use. Now if I think about this in terms of energy flow, at the top I've got this total energy, I've got some kinetic energy at the top, and I've got some potential energy at the top, but I've got nothing stored in the spring. At max compression, these two energies, kinetic and potential energy due to stored in gravity, goes into the spring potential energy. So that's where my energy is flowing in all this, and that's what my questions are, are leading me to. So let's go back to the problem. Now to solve the problem, I don't have any non-conservative forces. This is all conservative forces, so I don't have to worry about any kind of work. So I'm going to sum up all the mechanical energies at the top and set them equal to the sum of all the mechanical energies at the bottom at spring compression. And I'm going to consider the following energies, kinetic energy, potential energy stored in the gravitational field, um, the potential energy in the spring, and at the bottom I'm going to look at the same energies. So I'll go through and ask them with the questions. At the top, is it moving? And the answer is yes, so I keep the kinetic energy. At the top, is it above the other location? Well, the other location is the bottom, so yes, I'll keep that energy. At the top, is the spring compressed? Well, there's no spring, so that's going to go away. Then I'll look at the bottom. At the bottom, is it moving? No, it's at maximum compression, so that kinetic energy is going to go away. At the bottom, is it higher than the other location? And the answer is no, so I'm going to get rid of that potential energy. At the bottom, is the spring compressed? Well, yes, it's at maximum compression, so I'll keep that. So now I'll throw in my formulas, 1 half mv squared plus mgh equals 1 half kx squared. Then I'll put in the numbers, so I've got the numbers at the top equaling to the equation with the numbers at the bottom, and now I can find k, and I get k to be 3,387 newtons per meter.